Hello friends, welcome to SR Academy. Welcome to SR Academy. Empowering minds, igniting curiosity. Your gateway to knowledge unleashed. Let's get started. Today we are going to discuss about properties of biomaterials materials in this video. So there are, uh, uh, in the previous class we discussed about uh, uh, introduction to the biomaterials and the different material biomaterials used and the classification and all. So today we'll be discussing about properties of biomaterials. The first and foremost thing is bulk and surface properties of biomaterials, which plays a very important role because the surface is the place where the actual mechanisms are taking place the reactivity is taking place activity is taking place so that's why the bulk and surface properties level is plays a very important role for biomaterials next we are having the mechanical properties definitely because most of our uh, implants which, which has already been used in or of more of my mechanical exploited more of mechanical properties and then biological properties plays a very important role by compatibility by degraded all those things that we'll be discussing okay one by one the first one bulk and surface properties the bulk and the surface properties of the biomaterials used for biomedical implants or in medical implants have been shown a direct influence obviously in some cases the control the dynamic interaction that takes place at the tissue implant interface also this particular plays a very important role why because tissue interface when you're talking about when you're talking about interaction when you're talking about interface it is about the surface understanding so surface plays a very important role that's why i'm not given any introduction for this topic because just now i had told in the previous slide so biomaterials implanted must be compatible in nature that means they should not cause any extra work or any extra uh, infections or any allergic reactions or, or any kind of harmful for the adjacent tissues or the cells so these two properties play a very important role in the selecting of specific and best suitable biomaterial based on the location of interest so whenever you are talking about the material when you are using it inside our human body so bulk and surface property plays a very important role when you are talking about bulk the structure how exactly this looks like and how you know, how much quantity i need all those things and then the surface is very important because the dynamic interactions which controls the particular uh, you know uh, the movement or any other stuff or any mechanisms or even it can be about the interface okay so the these are the uh, two the what you say the very important property because they have to be very specific and best suitable material based on the these two properties the best suitable materials need to be selected so currently considerable effort is directed towards the development of the engineered surfaces that could elicit a rapid and highly precise reactions with cells and proteins tailored to specific application that means now imagine i have to get a particular property inside our body okay so for that a particular property is must okay to get that particular property you need to uh, do a lot of trial and error method with the lab inside the lab so that uh, different different structures different different parameters at different different uh, you know, intervals and all these things should be uh, you know done and along with that how exactly the surface is reacting whether the surface is giving the exact property which i need or not or precise or highly uh, precise or you can say or a particular you know uh, rapid reactions are happening at the surface or not all these things should be uh, you know uh, examined and tailored that means in the sense that is modif modified or tuned properly so that before we use it okay so considerable effort is directed towards in the development of engineered surfaces that could elicit that means that would gain the rapid and highly precise reactions with cells and proteins so that the there should not be any delayed reaction with the cells or a proteins where it has to be uh, it has to involve uh, where, where its function it itself is a uh, you know reaction with the cells or a proteins okay that has to have a specific applications the examples we are having a development of novel and a low thermogenic material is of central importance because it has been widely discussed and widely you know researched so titanium nitride that is tin or you can say tin so this titanium nitride is expected as perspective biomaterial however it is currently observed that a carbide and a carbonitrate that is we are having the carbide and carbonitrates like TICN these coatings become more popular nowadays but titanium nitride was used the best biomaterial 
in this thing okay this particular for 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 better bulk and surface properties or better interactions with the cells and proteins so before they being applied it has to be evaluated and meet a particular requirements understanding before you use it you need to evaluate and it means as I said in the previous slide as I explained so you need to have a lot of experimental setups a lot of different variation parameters so you need to evaluate and then meet the particular requirements then I need this property and there is no compromise in it to get that property it is not simple you have to do trial and error methods you have to keep on doing the experiments by varying a lot of factors okay the surface tension surface energy whatever the uh, no properties uh, which are related to the surface the uniformity of the surface and then the texture of the surface how hard it is how smooth it is and how uniform it is all those things need to be checked depending on the proposed location in the body understanding these all things plays a very important role when you're talking about bulk and surface properties biomaterials such as I mentioned before like we are having uh, uh, titanium uh, that is a stoichiometric TIN, TIN titanium carbon nitride that is also discussed and also DLC that is diamond like carbon and PLC polymer like carbon they seem to be a very good candidates for the future blood contact application so for a particular specific application I've given uh, I mentioned some of the examples here for blood contact applications we are having all the DLC PLC titanium carbide and also TIN so these materials could be deposited as thin films so how we are going to make these materials okay that can be deposited based on by using several techniques so usually we are having in the in, in the field of nanotechnology we will be using these materials because the layer has to be in the in the dimension of nanometer or the dimension or the thickness at least should be in nanometer like that so we are having we can use those kind of instruments in order to have the proper and the best uh, you know uh, which 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 have proven the best uh, techniques for the uh, thin film depositions so here we are having the pvd that is physical vapor deposition cvd that is a chemical vapor deposition whereas in pvd just a uh, heating or something will be there there is no chemical reaction will be involved and the deposition of the layer will be there whereas in cvd the chemical vapor deposition that there will be a chemical reaction will be involved where the uh, the uh, then only the surface will, will, will be formed the thin layer will be formed okay and then they are subjected to the exam in the influence of the deposited materials on the cell behavior that means once we are having the layer with these whatever the above mentioned layers are there whatever the materials you need based on that then you apply or I mean, you need to examine these particular uh, layers or the thin films along with the tissues or the cells which are uh, uh, which are uh, adjacent to the where exactly you want to implant these materials understanding if I want to implant these materials somewhere nearby my biceps so I have to take the uh, you know the biceps uh, the cell environment I need to study and what are the cells are there I need to take it out okay I can need to examine those cells along with these materials and I need to check whether these materials are causing any harmful or toxic effects to those cells or tissues or not that needs to be checked that is to check by compatibility uh, study so that was about the bulk and surface property then we are having the mechanical property under mechanical property I guess obviously most of the biomedical devices are made based on the mechanical properties and that we will study here so the success of graft uptake by the host mainly depends upon the mechano compatibility of tissues definitely whenever you are talking about a graft it depends on mechano compatibility of the tissues that means how struck uh, how uh, how exactly the how much flexi is flexibility it is and how what is the uh, tensile strength okay and other mechanical proper pro properties like elasticity okay all these things plays a very important role because in the mechanical property it is not about only the hardness wear and tear properties okay and just now what mentioned all these properties comes into picture so in other words the mechanical properties of the biomaterial should closely match the properties of the tissues that means when i am using the particular tissue inside our i mean particular biomaterial inside my body that I know that all my body is made up of tissues right so it should match the properties of the tissues that is a basic and most important property that the any biomaterial should have in order to do that 
we need to study their mechanical properties so robert hooke that we know that hooke's law everybody knows right robert hooke first discovered hooke's law or a law of elasticity what we call in 1678 and it states that when a material is subjected to a distraction force okay what happens it would lengthen its direction of the force which is proportional to the applied load so this is exactly how our tissue also works when i hold something okay a particular uh, displace, displacement of muscles will be there that means its surface changes its property changes and when i release again it will come back to this that, that is the uh, you know what you say that's a lot of elasticity now this extension of the specific applied to load may vary with the geometry and as well as the composition of the specimen definitely based on the geometry and as well as the composition it varies and stress is the normalized load or is the force which is divided by the area when it is a uh, stress is normalized load that is for a particular uh, geometry or for particular composition it is force divided by the area so based on the different mechanical properties materials can be categorized into elastic plastic brittle and ductile so elasticity versus plasticity what is the difference now the elasticity the for example the ability of a material to retain its original shape that we call we are calling it as a elasticity that means it will it will come back to its original shape for example a normal rubber you take you just you know uh, uh, you know expand it and sir so if we lose it it will come back to its this thing because it has got the elastic elastic property okay so uh, whenever the force is removed it has to come back to its original shape right whereas the ability of a material to attain new shape okay if any material can uh, when you when you apply some external force if any new shape it can form then we can call it as a plasticity understanding so elasticity it has to come back to its original shape whereas plasticity it has to form uh, it, uh, it can it should have the ability to form a new shape okay then for example i have a particular uh, pen or a particular small plastic i can mold it okay i can bend it okay so it has to have that property that is called as plasticity whereas elasticity it has to come back to its original shape so after removing your external force or stimuli so depending on the function or location we can select a biomaterial based on the elasticity or plasticity whatever the function we need inside our body or what location we are using it whether i am using it in heart liver or kidney or any other places that also plays a very important role so depending on that and also its function okay we can select a particular biomaterial based on the elasticity or plasticity whether i need plasticity or elasticity that will be de depend that depends on what function i'm looking for and what location i'm using this particular mechanical i mean property i mean materials so mechanical properties of our biomaterials must be known before using them as plant as implants definitely mechanical properties should you should know that what properties you need before you use it so stress strain curves are obtained by the plotting stress versus strain and the curves provide the information of the materials mechanical property such as elastic limit elasticity plasticity yield stress yield point ultimate tensile strength and fracture stress these all are the properties which will usually look for the biomaterials before we use inside the human body then we are having the biological properties so biocompatibility is definitely is one of the major biological bio property we should be looking before we use the implants inside our body or biomaterials inside our body so biocompatibility i am being uh, explaining this biocompatibility since many uh, since almost last two to three topics i am not going to explain it in detail so biocompatibility is nothing but the ability of a material to perform its uh, with an appropriate host response in the specific applications that means whatever the specific application is designed uh, that uh, particular biomaterial is for it has to perform that particular function only so ideally biomaterial should not provoke any harmful effects to the host system definitely it should not harm any adjacent tissue or cells inside our body it should do its own it should mind its own business that's uh, that's what the generally you can say the biocompatibility of a material is mainly influenced by the surface and bulk properties definitely because the surface is where the reactivity will come right if the reactivity uh, if you are talking about the biological properties definitely that's there is a huge influence from the surface and bulk properties by compatibility of a biomaterial depends on the roughness smoothness ridges grooves and pores and even the implantable size vitability properties like whether it is hydrophobic whether it is water living or water hating like hydrophilic phobic and hydrophilic nature and also degradation rate uh, whether it is slowly degrading whether it is 
faster uh, degradation faster or not then degradation products and mechanical properties this all plays a very important role so and biocompatibility depends on all these factors so immunogenicity is also one of the factor we need to study under biological properties that is defined as the ability to stimulate the immune response that means the biomaterials ability to stimulate the immune response or immune system now the response may be generalized or non-specific or specific whatever i want if i want a specific response that has to be there okay so there are different methods to evaluate the biocompatibility in both in vitro and in vivo that is in vitro in the sense in the laboratory using cell lines that means i will remove the cells of heart muscles if i want then i will test it on it if i remove the muscles of, uh, muscles of the liver then i will test it on in 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 the laboratory using cell lines whereas in vivo using directly animal models then example scaffold for example the, the ideal properties of the scaffolds are discussed below so you know that this ideal for example we know that in first module we discussed about how important the scaffold is and this whatever the ecm is there that ecm property only we, we are making naturally i mean synthetically that will be our scaffold understanding so the material the biomaterial which mimic the ecm can be called as by scaffold biocompatibility biocompatibility it should be biocompatible the cells will come there and sit on the scaffold they will differentiate and they will develop in that so, so scaffold will pro provide mechanical and structural properties all these things we discussed in the first model you can just go and uh, go through the ecm topic and scaffold topic and then high porosity with desired pore size why because the particular nutrients has to pass through that understanding that also should be there then adequate mechanical properties that is also need to be tested whether it is soft or hard if i need a soft material soft scaffold then i have to i need a scaffold then i have to develop a soft one if i need hard for bones and cartilages then i have to go for that then high surface area to volume ratio that means the surface should be high the value should be low so that the addition the attachment will be more why we need addition the high surface area here for scaffold because what is the function of the scaffold the cells will be seeded into the scaffold so that the scaffold should give more area to cells so that the attachment will be more and cell development div division proliferation and eventually the tissue formation will be faster so high surface to area volume ratio will help for that next biodegradation we know that degrade when the new tissue is formed you be it should not be scaffold should not be there for life lifetime once the tissues and um, cells are grown and tissue is formed then the scaffold has to leave degrade then mimics native ecm that means it should work as ecm that is extracellular matrix what is the what are the ecm functions to provide structure and mechanical support for the cells to grow right so next topic is here we are having the tissue engineering scaffold that we will discuss in the next class so 